Ah, shiny Pokemon. They're just like any other Pokemon, with one exception. They look way freaking cooler. You might think, yeah, the alternate colors look cool and all, but Reed, why would you even want to try to get a shiny? It's such a waste of time. Well, I have an answer to that. You're right. But I don't care. If you don't know, I already beat Pokemon Fire Red using only shiny Pokemon which cost me about two months of my life and an appendix. When I finished that, I thought, there was no way that I could ever do something like that again. But within a few months, I guess I forgot just how long and painful shiny hunting is, because I thought it would be a good idea to take that and step it up a notch. I decided to attempt the most infamously difficult Pokemon challenge, a Nuzlocke, but do it using only shiny Pokemon. Here are the rules that I followed. I can only use shiny Pokemon. Only one Pokemon can be caught in each route or area. I can only catch the first shiny that I see in a given area. No duplicates of a Pokemon or its evolution line can be used. If a Pokemon faints, it is considered dead and cannot be used for the rest of the attempt. If all my party members faint and I black out, I have lost and I must restart from the beginning. The battle mode is set, so I do not get a free switch after defeating a trainer's Pokemon. And finally, I cannot use any Pokemon that are above the level of the next gym leader's best Pokemon. Now I could go on to explain these rules more, but I'm sure that you're tired of just listening to me talk. So let's get into the actual gameplay. I chose to play Heart Gold version, and I named myself Reed.O. A nice perk of playing Heart Gold is that you can actually see if the starters are shiny before even choosing one. This made the odds of getting a shiny for the first hunt three times higher. Speaking of shiny odds, I did actually make a change to those. Using some intricate hacking, I changed the odds from the usual 1 in 8192 to 1 in 256. This was a drastic change that you might not agree with, but if I didn't do it, I would probably still be doing this run a whole year from now. I assure you, this still took a very long time, and I still lost some of my sanity. Anyways, with these increased odds, it wasn't long before this happened. Oh! Yes! With my shiny Cyndaquil, I narrowly defeated my rival and set out to catch my first wild shiny. With some terrible luck and some weird graphical glitches, I was starting to think that I did something wrong when I changed the shiny odds. But then, I finally found a shiny Rattata. My doubts faded quickly when, in only 25 encounters, I found a shiny Zubat. Never mind, I have it. I it's working. With my team of three, I faced the first gym leader, and with ease, I secured the first badge. On the way to the second gym, this happened. If I get a Zubat, bro. Not long after, I did end up finding a new shiny though. Oh! The second gym leader's bug type Pokemon were no match for my shiny Geodude and Quilava, so the second badge was absolutely free. I caught a shiny Hypno and gambled my way to a shiny Dratini before challenging the third gym. Whitney led with a shiny Clefairy, who my Hypno took out with ease, but her Miltank was a far greater threat. I came in with a plan, but it unfortunately failed. I watched in agony as Miltank killed my Rattata, Zubat, Quilava, Hypno, and Dratini. To a single Miltank, I lost my first five Pokemon. All that stood to stop Miltank from completing the full wipe was my shiny Geodude with five HP. With a single Geodude left, I secured the third badge. Rest in peace, Wednesday, Trunks, Zoro, Ichigo, Sakura. At least I still have Pika. For my first replacement, I added a shiny Metapod who evolved into a Butterfree. After that, I got a shiny Nidoran. You're probably wondering why this tree 
is a Rapidash. It's because I thought it would be a good idea to randomize the static encounters so I could get random mons instead of legendaries. Looking back, I probably shouldn't have because I didn't realize that there are actually a ton of non-legendary static encounters in Heart Gold. Anyways, I ended up getting a shiny Rapidash before nearly losing my Geodude. <laughs> I added a shiny Mareep and a shiny Stantler to once again have a full team before taking on the fourth gym. My green Stantler sent all of Morty's ghost types back to hell without taking a single hit, and I earned the fourth badge. After that, me and the boys went on a quick fishing trip to catch a shiny Magikarp that I quickly evolved into Gyarados, because what's a Nuzlocke without a Gyarados to carry the team? Following that, I had my longest hunt yet and it was for a Pidgey of all things. It took so long that day turned into night and I had to get a Hoot Hoot instead. The fighting type gym leader Chuck read me like a book and killed my Butterfree with a rock slide, but I was able to finish him off with a balanced effort for my whole team to earn the fifth badge. My arch nemesis Miltank decided to join the squad along with a shiny Glalie. Price's ice types were no match for my star studded roster so getting the 6th badge was a cakewalk. I caught a shiny Tentacool before absolutely destroying Jasmine's steel types to earn the 7th badge. In the Whirl Islands, I found a shiny Horsey and a shiny Tangela appeared on the way to the final gym of the Jota region. Claire's dragon types were definitely my biggest test since Whitney's mill tank nearly swept my whole team. My Glalie, Tangrowth, and Seedra all fell before Amphros finished the job to secure the eighth badge. I had collected all eight badges of the Jota region with just nine total deaths on my team. In my opinion, those numbers are pretty fantastic. Before traveling to the Pokemon League, I tried to get a Gligar, but ended up with a shiny Fampy instead. You lost to the Kimono girls? <laughs> They're incredibly strong. We'll see about that. I may have been a bit too confident because the Kimono Girls were definitely no pushovers. I handled the first four okay, but the fifth ended up taking out my Ampharos with her Vaporeon before Nidoking finished the job. Ooh, it's the bird. It's a level 45 Cleffa. After running from the legendary Cleffa, I decided to search for a final teammate before heading to the Pokemon League. I ended up getting a shiny Magnemite, who I evolved into a Magnezone. With that, I was ready for the Elite Four. First up was Will and his Psychic types. Magnezone handled the first two Pokemon with ease before Rapidash, Gyarados, and Miltank each took out a Pokemon for a flawless victory. Next was Koga's Poison types. My Golem took out Ariados before Rapidash melted Fortress. A couple Nidoking Earthquakes handled Muck, and Miltank squashed Venomoth. Magnazone vaporized Crobat to complete another clean victory. Third was Bruno and his fighting types. Gyarados and Nidoking had no issues destroying all the beefcakes for a win against the third member of the Elite Four. Lastly was Karen and her dark types, who were all defeated by Gyarados alone. With that, I had beaten the Elite Four, and all that stood between me and the title of Johto Champion was Lance and his Dragon types. His Gyarados crit Magnezone with a waterfall, but a discharge took him out. A swap into my own Gyarados with waterfall handled Charizard, and my Nidoking one-shot Aerodactyl. Gyarados came back in with a four times effective Ice Fang against the first Dragonite. The second, fell to Miltank's Blizzard, and the third to another Gyarados Ice Fang. Bye bye Dragonite. It is over. I am the champion of the Johto region, let's go boys. And we lost none of them baby. Elite Four without a death. Pika is the only one that's been here since the beginning. Natsu. Jolly. 1% Milk, the Miltank. Nido King, whose name is Goku, and that's it.
Let's go. Only 115 hours. It is not the end. You're wrong. It was definitely far from the end because HeartGold actually has eight more badges to collect in the Kanto region. For some reason, I thought I needed an extra challenge and decided to retire all my shinies that joined the Hall of Fame so I would have to catch a whole new team. With a ragtag team, I sailed to Kanto to catch my first shiny there. Hey! In an accidental double battle in Vermilion Gym, I killed my own Stantler with an earthquake. Against Lieutenant Surge, Donfin had a clean one-shot sweep of his electric types to secure the ninth badge. I found a shiny Abra, who I caught with the Master Ball because I didn't want to risk it teleporting away. I took out my anger on a shiny Raticate because of bad luck hunting before catching a shiny Murkrow. Sabrina led the 10th gym with her psychic types. Her Espeon made quick work of my Knocked Owl with a crit and straight up one shot my Donphan and Pidgeot. My Murkrow finally got rid of Espeon and Alakazam finished off the rest to earn me the 10th badge. I caught a shiny Spiro and a shiny Bellsprout. In its first battle, my Fero was killed by a Vaporeon. The 11th gym leader was Misty with her water types. She gave me a little bit of trouble and I made a mistake that led to my Murkrow dying to an Ice Beam. Starmie was resistant, but Tenacruel eventually bested it to gain the 11th badge. In order to guarantee that I could get a Shuckle later, I got a shiny Diglett and began smashing rocks. With a 10% encounter rate and most rocks not resulting in a Pokemon, I expected to be here for a very long time. But before I knew it, I can't believe we actually got him. My Doug Trio got crit by a random trainer's Fero before I caught a shiny Chansey, who has just a 1% encounter rate in the route I found it in. After evolving it, I was very disappointed with how shiny Blissey looked. Before taking on the 12th gym, I wanted to get a 6th member, so I caught a shiny Nidorina. Janine used poison types, and I tried to do a setup with Blissey, but it failed horribly. I had tons of type advantages, so the rest of the battle went off without a hitch, and I earned the 12th badge. I did some more gambling to get a shiny Eevee that I evolved into an Umbreon before taking on the 13th gym. Brock's rock types were not even a challenge to my team, who destroyed them with a balanced effort to earn the 13th badge. With my options for Pokemon to catch dwindling, I decided to start a pretty difficult hunt. By headbutting certain trees, it is possible to find a Heracross, and his shiny is freaking awesome, so I of course went for it. After 1600 encounters, I finally got a new shiny, but it was an Apom that I had no intention of using. Not long after, I did end up finding a shiny Heracross. Yes! I cannot believe I allowed you to be in my presence and you ran away like a little wimp. Nonetheless, I refused to give up, and I ended up catching a shiny Combi, who was male, so he couldn't even evolve into Vespaquin. After a few hundred more headbutts, I found another one, and this time, I actually caught it. I am naming him Dong. The 14th gym leader was Erica with her grass types. I could have handled the entire team with Dong, but I wanted to get crafty. I used Power Trick with Shuckle to swap his attack and defense since Erica's Tangela didn't have a physical attacking move. This gave Shuckle an attack stat of 258 and he demolished it. Blossom nearly took her out, but my Nidoqueen Queen prevailed to earn me the 14th badge. I fished for a shiny Chinchu before the fire type gym leader Blaine was nearly swept by it and my Tenacruel to net me the 15th badge. I caught a shiny Golduck and headed to the final gym to fight against Blue. I had to use literally every member on my team, 
but I defeated him without any deaths to gain the 16th and final badge. Before the Elite Four rematch, I wanted to get one more shiny, and I wanted it to be a good one. I decided to try to get a shiny Larvitar. Unfortunately, it only had a 5% encounter rate, and in order to guarantee that I could get it under Nuzlocke rules, I had to make sure that I had all the Pokemon in the area. In the one that I chose, the only Pokemon that I didn't have yet was Quagsire, so I headed back to the ruins to get one. Back in Mount Silver Cave, I was finally able to start hunting for Larvitar. At this point in the challenge, I was honestly tired of shiny hunting, so I decided to pull an old trick and hunt it on multiple games at the same time. This made it four times as fast, but it still took hours. After nearly 2,000 encounters, I found it. Yes! I evolved it into Tyranitar and assembled the team for the Elite Four rematch. I chose Lantern, Tyranitar, Nidoqueen, Shuckle, Heracross, and Alakazam. With that, I was ready, and I entered the arena. Will led with Bronzong, who was taken out by two crunches from Tyranitar. Next came Gardevoir, and I swapped to Alakazam to take it out with a couple of Shadow Balls. Jinx got my Lantern weak, but a Shuckle power trick took her out along with a Grumpig. Slowbro was destroyed by Tyranitar's crunches, and Zatu fell to a Stone Edge. Will, down. Koga sent out Skuntank first, who got hit with Earthquake mid-dig by Tyranitar for an Oko. Toxicroak fell to a couple Nidoqueen Earth Powers. I power tricked with Shuckle to squash Venomoth, but I made a misread and Shuckle was killed by Crobat. Lantern avenged him with a Discharge, Tyranitar earthquaked Swalot, and Alakazam finished Muck with Psychic. Koga, down. Bruno led with Hitmontop, and I reflected with Alakazam before a Psychic Oko. It was the same story for Hariyama and Machamp. I swapped to Nidoqueen for Lucario, and two Earth Powers stopped him. Another Alakazam Reflect and Psychics killed Hitmonlee and Hitmonchan. Bruno, down. Karen led with Weavile, who fell to a single Mega Horn. I switched in Lantern against Honchkrow for an easy knockout. Spiritomb cursed, so I had to swap Lantern for Tyranitar, who earthquaked Spiritomb for the kill. I mistakenly swapped into Heracross against Absol and was destroyed by Psycho Cut. Karen withdrew Absol against Tyranitar for Umbreon, and Umbreon did not last very long. Absol came back in and protected, but fell to Sandstorm. Houndoom couldn't handle a single Stone Edge and got one shot. Karen, down. Elite Four, beaten. All that was left was the rematch with Lance. Nidoqueen's Ice Beam one shot Salamence, and Lantern Okoed Gyarados. Alakazam couldn't handle Garchomp's Outrage, so I decided to stall it out. An Ice Beam and a Confusion Hit finished him off and I swapped back into Tyranitar for Charizard. A four times effective Stone Edge made quick work of him, along with Dragonite. Another Stone Edge one-shot Altaria, and the battle was finished. I had done it again. This time, it was not nearly as clean as the first Elite Four fight, but I still had become the champion for a second time. All right, the end again, but it's not the end. There's one more battle. I assembled a team of living all-time greats for the ultimate Pokemon battle. Red led with Pikachu, who Nidoking one-shot with Earthquake. Lapras outlasted Magnezone and was switched out against Lantern. Nidoking's Ice Beam defeated Venusaur, and Lapras came back in just to be electrocuted by Lantern. Nidoking nearly fell, but finished off Snorlax. My Gyarados decided to take a nap against Blastoise, but eventually got the job done. A single waterfall snuffed Charizard's flame, and it was finally over.
like the video and subscribe right now. Because only 50% of you guys are subscribed. And if you want my girlfriend to eat this month, I suggest you do so.